Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, funding a microtech, selling a heretic. Uh, I get the Spyderco Micro Jimbo thanks to Mike Janich and Spyderco, and it's awesome. And button lock or bar lock, I want to talk about uh, those two venerable locks. Now, they've both been out and uh, have become ubiquitous. Uh, which one do you like better? Uh, I have two examples here that are good that I like, uh, but I, I think I've decided on which one I I like better, but which one I trust more. Uh, maybe that's a dead giveaway. Um, so yeah, we're doing all that tonight and so much more. I have a couple of cool new knives uh, that if you've seen any of the uh, shorts I've put out this week, uh, you've seen them. They're cool. They all came in kind of at once. Uh, to include that Spyderco Micro Jimbo. So we'll be checking that out too. I also have a surprise knife giveaway. Uh, I have a little stockpile of knives uh, given to the channel by uh, chiefly this old sword, Dave, this old sword blade reviews. Um, and we're giving away one of those knives tonight. And it's a pretty cool one, I got to say. Uh, it is the CH3507. Uh, you know, it has one of those catchy catchy names. Now, my theory about that is, and this is totally, totally unresearched and probably very unfounded, uh, but I think uh, that this was probably a company that has been OEMing knives for other companies for years and finally decided, like some others, like, hey, we got pretty good chops. Why don't we release some knives under our own shingle? And they're like, well, what should we call this knife? And they're like, well, we're in China, so let's call it, and this is the 3,507th knife we've uh, taken all the way through uh, to production. Um, so let's call this the CH3507. And I got to say, it rolls off the tongue, but not nearly as smoothly as this blade rolls out of the handle. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We've got captured bearings here in the pivot. Beautiful G10, blue G10. Um, uh, I was just actually um, mentioning to um, Jim off off camera this is kind of his color blue uh it's it's pretty carolina blue you it's, it's not coming through uh over the over the camera quite as well but um also a really nice americanized tanto blade uh all flat ground with a very gradual uh change from that flat grind here uh, the main bevel to the tip bevel so we'll be giving this away it's hashtag knife in the chat just put hashtag knife in the chat between now and uh one hour from now basically 57 minutes from now we'll be giving this sucker away give or take and uh all you got to do is hashtag knife and this this knife can be yours this very same night you don't even pay shipping <laughs> not even shipping and i'll get it in the uh get it in the mail to you uh in i'm saying within a week's time i always say tomorrow and then Something spirals out of control. Ground fog. Nice to have you here, sir. As always, it's a pleasure. He's waving. I'm waving back. Have a nice day. Good to have you here, sir. I just got the new Alan Foltz Ritual Compact in Damascus. That is cool. Damascus with the um, uh, doesn't that have the? Uh, oh no, 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 no. I'm thinking of the. I'm mixing the two new models up. But that Damascus is beautiful. Uh, it's nice. I do wish it was full size though. Do you have the full size with the white micarta? I always thought that was a pretty nice looking knife. Uh, Fernando Salome, nice to have you here, sir. Hello, knife junkies, he says. Jim, Bob, how y'all doing tonight? Let's have some fun. Love you all. Well, we love you right back. And yeah, we're having a great time. And let's have some fun. Dave, how you doing, Dave? This old sword blade review says, the bar was locked and my nightcap got stuck in the door. Evening, junkies. Evening to you, good sir. It's great to see you back on the on the mend or not on the mend, like fully well it's good to see you recovered and see those hands manipulating knives again sir uh broke az knives is that arizona knives uh well we're all kind of in that uh boat every now and again uh we want something that we really really want um and uh and we're we don't necessarily want to pony up the cash i am selling my heretic manticore x uh the one that i got on July 1st, 2022, the very same day uh, that it became legal in this state right here, thanks to Doug Ritter. Now, I really like this knife, uh, but, 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 you know, I've been in a microtech suddenly uh, with, with my 
acquisition of the amphibian, I want to go in on Microtech. I've I've fallen in love with Microtech, and this is cool. I do like it, uh, but I'm not so. In, I I want I want a, a SOCOM Elite out the side automatic. That's just what I want. That's what I think I'll carry. I never carry this. Uh, this is like a brand new uh, out of the box. I'm going to see if anyone here wants it tonight before I put it on the open market. That's that's uh, that's my funding a microtech selling a heretic. Uh, so that's what we're going to do in a little while. Uh, but we'll do a uh, a knife giveaway. We'll do a knife sale. It's uh, it's unprecedented ground we're we're treading here, boys and boys and ladies. All right, I'm going to put this to the side here. So how's it all going here, Dan Hazard? Nice to have you here, Dan. Uh, someone get Vosti to make a Thunderbird with a bar lock, please. That Thunderbird is pretty cool. I like all the multiple uh, deployments on that one. I also like the one with the red striated um, G10. I thought that was nice. Blade Ogre, good to have you here, sir. Uh, I know he's got at least 10 on him tonight. Pedro Armstrong, howdy, howdy, he says. Well, howdy, howdy to you, sir. Uh, Daniel Huff, nice to have you here, Daniel. Good evening, Bob, Jim, and fellow knife junkies. It is a good evening. It is Thursday. The weekend is finally here, not including tomorrow, but including tomorrow. You know, Friday is kind of a... God, Friday, I wake up in an awful mood. Jesse, Jesse, nice to have you here. Evening all, he says. Uh, I have such a good night uh, on Thursday night, but I have to wake up after only five, four and a half hours. And uh, Friday morning, I always make the mistake of listening to uh, my news, the, the, my news source in the morning uh, while making the girls lunch and I just get angry. <laughs> And I'll be walking. These are full of God. These people are all corrupt. And everyone else is sleeping, but they'll they'll hear the monologue. Oh, what you know? Everything all right? Yes. No. Uh, Stephen Clayton, nice to have you here, sir. Smash that like button. He says, indeed, with those big Popeye forearms, smash it. Will be good to have you here, sir. Button lock over bar lock always. Hey, Bob, Jim, and everyone. Nice to have you. Uh, th that was like a mic drop statement. And you're like, hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm curious why you say always. Um, is it as it? I know it's really the the most fun to to fidget. That is for sure. Uh, but is it the strongest? I feel like a bar lock uh, might be the strongest. These are my two examples, my favorite examples. I have uh, far more expensive versions than this, but this is, I think, the best bar lock I have. The Iridium from Kershaw. Uh, what was that last? Oh yeah. Cobalt, nice to have you here, sir. Uh, greetings, everyone, he says. Greetings to you. And until you write, like, phonetically what those two, um, three-character words are before Cobalt and how to pronounce them, I'm just, I got to go Cobalt. I've tried. Um, uh, but they look like runes, like Viking runes. R runes, and I can't pronounce them. <laughs> or, or at least don't know how to read them. Blade Ogre, good to have you here. Button lock or bar lock, unless the deadbolt lock is considered to be a button lock, I'm uh, not a big fan of either, he says. Oh, interesting. So you like the deadbolt, the one that uh, what was that? That was designed by uh, Flavio Icoma and uh, for CRKT. It was either designed by him for them or licensed by them from him. I don't actually know that. Uh, but Flavio Icoma, one of the guys who... Um, who uh, who pioneered ball bearings in the pivot with the Icoma Korth uh, pivot system. Uh, and, and those are all loose balls. Those were the loose ball bearings that they just kind of threw in a race. And then you don't uh, take your knife apart. And it's just like. <laughs> Donald Fry, nice to have you here, Donald. Good evening, Bob and Jim and fellow junkies. Well, good evening to you, sir. It's good to have everyone kind of gathered together. Now, I imagine, I don't know why, because I know you're all watching on a phone or computer. Craig Vincent, good to have you here. Evening, folks, he says. Or uh, on a I, iPad or something like that. You're probably in your shop or in your den or or somewhere away from the rest of the fam or, or just away from the rest of the world. Uh, but in my mind, you're around a radio. It's a radio with a warm light. And there's a video screen on it so you can see the cool stuff we're showing off. But some reason it's radio like and it's and 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 that's the that's that's we're all gathered together. Yeah, okay. And uh it's Lent. I haven't even had a drink, so 
This is this is what I'm feeling. This is the warmth I'm feeling. EDC, good to have you here. EDC, good morning all from the UK. Well, good to have you here. I know we have um, I know we have a couple of others, uh, Jock, uh, but he 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 can't join us usually. So it's great to have you, man. Uh, welcome, welcome indeed. Uh, tell me what you carry over there in the UK. Do you carry a knife, or do you collect and keep them at home, or? Um, have you, are, are, do you have like a, a slip joint collection or tell, tell me about what your, uh, knife situation is. Um, have a knife day says, uh, I have the white and blue and also the black. I'm going to send the new knife to VEF. Oh, nice. 50, 50, very controversial for some. That is funny. No, 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 no. I think on that knife in particular, I mean, we're talking about, uh, the, the Alan Foltz, um, with that super, super, uh, upswept Persian, you need a couple of VEF serrations uh, towards the Ricasso or even up towards the tip just to make sure you're grabbing on. I mean, we know with that curve, it's going to be great slicing, but you also might be shying away from, you want to make sure just in case that you're snagging a little bit. So I like the VEF serrations on a curvy blade like that. Eugene Krabs, nice to have you here, Eugene. Uh, carrying the Spidey Chef today to commemorate finally getting a sleesh buoy. That's cool. Oh, so you, you paid for it, ordered it, hasn't arrived. Uh, okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down. That's cool. I'm looking, uh, not looking for it. I'm, I'm happy for you to be getting that and was happy to see that they released another sleesh buoy. I will not be, uh, that ship for me has sailed. Uh, but, uh, I, it's cool to see it again. Split and Slice is nice to have you here, Byron. Howdy, Bob. Jim, Junkies, glad to be here at Thursday Night Knives. Oh, indeed. Good to have you here, Byron. Uh, take a seat, sir, around the radio. Okay, I'll stop right there. Uh, bar versus button. Uh, may I choose neither unless an automatic? Okay, which is it? Uh, and actually, uh, I'm not being a smart aleck. The uh, bar lock, um, uh, what is it? The automatic large Adamus is a bar lock release you see you just pull the bar lock and it flips out um so it, it, i was assuming you meant a button lock but uh for an automatic but they do have them um with the bar lock so i don't know if that changes your calculus uh dave says i have a socom elite out the front or uh, out the side in tanto flavor bob let's talk oh Really? Okay. I was thinking clip point, but I do love the Tontos. Let us talk. Okay. Uh, what is the size on that heretic? The heretic is a 3.8 inch blade. Uh, overall, I'm not sure. Um, overall, I'd say it's probably nine and a quarter inches long, probably nine and a quarter. I'm going to put this under here. Um, recurve, uh, hollow ground. It's hollow ground. It's pretty damn sharp. You got the jimping up here on the, on the blade. It's got, it does have your, um, out the front rattle, you know, you, you gotta be able to be, uh, in, with a non, uh, G and G Hawk out the front actually, but, uh, you do know Microtech soon or this, I think it's this model year. Uh, they have two prototypes that they've built. Uh, but the, they're out the front without any wobble. I expect that to be extremely expensive, and it's going to be slow going. I know it. Uh, Mongo Kid from the gutter. Good to have you here, sir. Uh, good morning, folks, he says. Well, good morning to you. I wonder where you're, you're, uh, you're reaching to us from. Uh, wherever it is, it's morning here. It's late night, but by the time we end the show, it's early morning uh, here. Five Door, good to have you here. Bar or button? No thanks if I must choose. Button, wow a lot of like dislike of both of these locks. I'm surprised uh, because though they've both seen a real renaissance or I should say resurgence with the, uh, uh, with the bar, with the axis lock patent going away. And there for a while, there are tons of bar locks. And then the button lock thing, it seemed like uh, uh, everyone was waiting for Protec to nail it and they did. And then suddenly everyone jumped on that. Um, but both of those things have been around for a while. So, uh, but uh, I'm surprised. Oh, so, so are we thinking frame lock uh, and uh, liner lock and back lock? Is, is that, is that it? Let me know. I don't know. 
Hero Sticks, good to have you here. Hero, evening and cheers all back from East Africa. No kidding. Was an incredible trip. Didn't score any local knives, but it was a grand affair nonetheless. Well, Hero Sticks, welcome back, sir. It's so good to have you stateside. And uh, man, that sounds like a hell of a hell of an experience you just had. Uh, something to tell the grandkids about. Um, making memories. That's what we should all be doing. So that's cool, man. Welcome home. Will B says, I fidget a lot. And I prefer flipper tabs over studs or holes. Okay, flipper tabs. Uh, in line, do you have any any preference on the flipper tab itself? Uh, that's my little sidebar. And then uh, bar locks don't work with flippers. Yeah, you know, they don't really. They don't really. It always feels soft. Uh, Spyderco, or not Spyderco. Benchmade had that one weird stubby, I think it was a Shane Sibbert design, oddly enough. It was like a double peak Bowie. It was it was short. It was too short. It needed another inch to fully express its spiritual lines. Mongo Kid from the Gutter says, uh, who or which brand br uh, brought the first button lock knife on the market? Well, okay. People are going to say ProTech, and it's, it's hard to disagree with that. Um, but... Wait, button lock. Yeah, it's hard to disagree with that. Uh, Protec was doing a lot with the Malibu, and then uh, I believe they had something before that, the Mordax, you know, that they were doing uh, with um, with Caviso or now Caviso. So they were doing that a lot. But oddly enough, uh, David Cam of Orion Knives, he before almost anyone else, like he was kind of doing it as Protec was doing it. Uh, with his with his um, Cetus, no, not the Cetus, uh, the Orion knives, uh, Scorpion, and the one before that, the um, I can't remember what that was called. It was after some celestial body, uh, and it was the larger one of those models. But anyway, he was doing really good flipper button locks, kind of before everybody else uh, jumped on that bandwagon. So uh, I, I guess I would say ProTech was really doing the most R and D. Uh, but there were some smaller companies, i.e. Orion Knives, where we were seeing it bef uh, and seeing it done really well with a flipper tab way forward of the pivot before companies like Civivi were, were uh, doing it, you know, and they kind of a year later did it. I'm not saying Civivi was looking at David Cam and said, oh, my gosh, let's do this. But he he was light and nimble enough uh, as a company to be able to to jump on that, to see, see the right Read the tea leaves and jump on that. Anyway, Cobalt says, none. I prefer good old frame locks. Strong, reliable, easy to use in different scenarios, including silent one-hand opening. Yep. I had my Sabenza on me today, which you'll see in a moment. And, uh, oh, uh, by the way, I didn't say this is LMAX steel. LMAX. Cool. Uh, not steel we see too much. Anyway, I had my Sabenza on me today, which you'll see in a moment, and I just really cherish the the slow roll, the hydraulic feel. Hey, Shredder, how's it going, guys? Love the button lock. Uh, they are fun, but seems the bar lock is a little stronger. See, that's exactly what I was thinking. Unless, unless we're talking about the CJRB button lock with that with the very tight tolerance, machined out uh, straight wall scoop that the plunge fits in, as opposed to the ever widening cone shaped channel uh, that to me um, could introduce slop. Whereas that perfectly machined slot, uh, it seems really strong, but on the whole, I would agree with you. Uh, could definitely be all, <laughs> wait, wait, could definitely be all in my head. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, so good to be watching tonight. So good to have you here. I know you're, you've been gone a little while, so welcome back. It's good to Good to see your name and good to have you back here. Uh, Jawako, nice to have you here, Jawako. Crossbar. Favorite is the clutch lock from Kaiser. My drop bear is super fidgety and rock solid. All right, since we're talking about it, let me show you. This iridium is just the bee's knees here. It is the smoothest. It is ultra smooth and just as wobble-free as you can imagine. Um this is uh this is so god i have something bothering me over here sorry uh this is so free and and uh free and easy on that pivot you can just oops you can just knock your camera down you can pull that back and just swing it so easily and um you know i have uh i have 
a Hogue. I have a couple of other, um, I have a couple of Benchmade Axis locks. Anyway, I think that this Iridium, this Kershaw Iridium, really, really knocks it out of the park. So I know you weren't asking, but I'm telling. I love that thing. And now I want to get the, uh, they have a Warren Cliff version of that. Um, and since I never really bought in on the Warren Cliff version of the, oh, well, totally different knife, but uh, I didn't get the Warren Cliff version of the Cogent. So anyway, I, I, I feel, I feel like I need to get another, uh, nice flippy Warren Cliff. Eugene Page, nice to have you here, Eugene. Thank you for coming in and stopping me from talking right there. Cause I was just going off at the mouth. Howdy from Wyoming late to the party oh we're late to the party because we're not in wyoming uh what a beautiful place that is uh it's been about 42 years since i've been there but i remember it being beautiful will be oh man i'm really liking that i was afraid it was the smaller one. Oh no it's the x brother here let me show you um i i especially like how on the spine that's where they have all the branding so when it's in your clutches you can't see it. Man, that recurve is awesome. It's very sharp. LMAX steel. Oh, and then this right here. It has a um it has a glass breaker there, but but very, very difficult to feel. It doesn't doesn't hurt or anything like that. Edgy American Shane. I'm excited about the upcoming American Blade Works button lock. That sounds awesome. Hey, does it look cloudy to you guys all of a sudden? I'm I'm getting uh it's not uh What's going on here? I don't know. We've had a couple of uh, windstorms here lately, and things have been a little uh, off kilter. Uh, Donald Fry says, have both, like both, but I'll go with the bar lock any day. Uh, okay, so what about in terms of fidget? I, I think we've established that the bar lock is stronger, but what about the fidget? Uh, that's that's uh, I, I think that belongs to the button lock. Stephen Clayton says, I like the button lock for the fidget factor. Does anyone have a TKL knives combatant for sale or trade? Steven, I saw that you asked about that. Um, I saw that you asked about that. Uh, and I, I think I responded. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I am not, I am not going to sell mine. But I want you to know that he is redesign has redesigned the blade. He showed me a picture of the prototype. The blade is 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 better the blade that i have is the second iteration which was definitely an improvement of the first he added a swedge and made it a little bit thinner now he made it slicier pointier with longer swedge Ooh, you might just wait until that comes out steven i would say it's worth it uh personally um i just wanted to see oh, okay uh, let's see hang on what oh dave what are you doing to me okay all right, we will talk, Dave. <laughs> He's sending me pictures of his. Uh, okay, we'll talk. We'll swook. Uh, and Dave, if you are considering a trade, you have to let me know that too. Uh, the Shredder Knife Review says, uh, which brand first bought the first uh, brought the first button lock? Bob sips water, rolls up his sleeves. Ha <laughs> ha! Get ready for an education. Oh, oh! I hope not. I hope. Uh, <laughs> I don't mean to be like uh, like that, but. Uh, Get ready for an education. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Edgy American says the Solaris, excellent button lock. Yes, uh, the that's the one I was trying to remember. Uh, yes, excellent button lock, and kind of doing it before uh, many of the big guys. Five Door says, in order for me, frame lock, liner lock, compression lock. Yes, yes, we need to talk about the compression lock. I've enjoyed a button lock, but don't uh, like reassembly or knife having external parts involved external oh oh you mean the button itself all right all right i think it's time i think we have to get to this because i i want to talk about some of these uh will b says i like elliot's flipper tabs that are uh all ferrum forged knives oh yeah me too the way they the way they they're very ergonomic on the finger when you open them and then they're very aggressive forward uh when they're open and and then leave a great spot for a choil if a choil is your thing all that said let us now get to a pocket check. Today was a very, very special day. You all know it was the 29th of February. It is 
for a couple more hours, the 29th of February, a ridiculous day uh, that we celebrate every four years when when those uh, extra quarter days we actually have in every year add up to one whole year and we get the leap year. Well, this right here was made in 2016 on leap day. So this is eight years old now on this day. I think it's cool that uh, when you buy a Sabenza or a Chris Reeve knife, you get a quote unquote birth card and you see uh, when the knife was completed. And uh, this, I remember marveling at how cool it was that it was leap year or leap day. So uh, the 29th. So I carried this today, even though I'm in the in the very first blushes of infatuation with my new Microtech Amphibian that we'll look at in a second. I had to carry this today. There's no way I wasn't going to carry the Sabenza on a day that I was aware it was made eight years ago. Sorry, I can't really open this left-handed at all. That is one thing that I've always found kind of weird about the knife uh, is that it's uh, one-sided in terms of the thumb stud. Now, I know there are some versions uh, or you can get a uh, thumb stud that goes all the way through, um, but still it it leaves something to be desired on this side. So I'm pretty sure they made some double lug versions. Isn't that isn't that true, guys? Double lug. Anyway, I love the Sabenza 21. I love the, the way the um, inlays are. I've grown to like the inlays on the 31, uh, looks wise, that is, and wouldn't mind getting one of those. Uh, but this old snail trailed, it's not that old, it's eight years old, but this snail trailed, well loved Neve, Jared Neve sharpened um, Chris Reeve knife is just freaking awesome. This is one, you know, obviously that will never leave the collection. All right. Second up in the pocket today, I had the Rosecraft. Lusa Hatchie Jack. I've been uh, admiring everyone else's um, new, new, you know, they have that new uh, sow belly. That's not a sow belly. What is it? A bow trapper. That bow trapper and the new uh, gun stock, both very cool. Uh, but neither of them do I have to have. I might get them. I might end up getting them, but neither of them do I feel like I must have, like I felt with this one and the Cane Creek. And I, I realized a lot of that has to do with the color. On the Cane Creek, uh, that G10 was really, really nice looking. And you don't hear me say that too often. And on this one, it was the color of this orange bone is just spectacular. And then the um, Sheffield-inspired clip point blade. Um, Andy Armstrong takes a lot of inspiration from those Sheffield uh, slip joint companies. I know the... Um, the Cane Creek Jack was also uh, inspired by a Sheffield company. I think it was John Allen and Son or something like that. I, I remember reading it uh, not too long ago. Rosecraft uh, or that Rosebud Shield is very nice. These are made in China. Uh, right down there, you see that's a stop pin. So a modern slip joint, meaning it uses a stop pin to stop the blade and not the size of the kick. That's this part of the Ricasso, which on a traditional slip joint, that is the thing that slams into the lock to stop it. And if it's not the right height, if it's uh, filed down too low, it will cause blade wrap, which is when the slip joint blade uh, contact makes contact with the spring on the inside when you're closing it. And then you'll get a little flat spot on your blade that you'll obsess over until you sharpen out. Uh, this was my baguette cutter today. I had a baguette. I've been, I was really, really going off on the French bread. We have a Wegmans right next to work. And man, their bakery is second to none. They have an amazing bakery and their French bread is so good. And I'd get a loaf, you know, about this long and give some to my buddy, you know, like a, and then eat the rest. And I had to stop doing that, but I just started up again <laughs> because I can't stop doing anything for too long. And uh, especially when it's delicious bread, because then you get the French bread and then you get the Irish Kerrygold butter. Mm, so good on my belt today uh, under my under my sweater and not printing at all was the MR1. This is a TKL uh, knives this is the call version 
of the Night Stalker. So he uses the Night Stalker blank and uh, just puts the bevel on the top so that you have a Pakal style a Night Stalker, basically, called the MR-1 because it was commissioned by Marine Raider Unit 1 out in San Diego. Uh, they wanted something like this for, uh, I don't know, I guess uh, when you're clearing rooms, um, you know, this this is all just stuff I've heard. Obviously, this is not uh, my vocation, but when you're clearing rooms, um, it's good to have a knife. Oh, we were just talking to Denny Fury last night, and he was talking about this. You have a knife on your LBE, your load-bearing equipment right here, kind of up high. And if you land on your belly, you can kind of get it. If, you, if you're if you up here and you need it, you can get it. And um, and I guess the idea for the that Marine unit is to have it kind of on the finger and you can, you can use it or draw it easily. I don't know, man. I, I'm not a Marine Raider, but I think it's... I think it's cool and they needed something like this and you know I when I think of marine raiders I think of the marine raider buoy which is like a big western style and uh it's cool to see this because it this is a realistic fighting knife you know if you're if you're in a tight space and and uh, your gun is pinned against you or you're out of ammunition or something has jammed or something has gone wrong um there it is, or maybe that's part of your your force continuum, and you and you can't shoot because there are people all around. I don't know, uh, but commissioned by um, Marines, uh, Marine Raider unit, and made by a Marine, uh, T. Kel, uh, Tim Kell. His his knives are so cool. He just uh, has a new collaboration with Jared Neve of Neve's Knives uh, that is up. You can get that called the FLN. That is cool. It is a a karambit super high speed low drag karambit looks awesome um and then i have something coming out with him uh he and i have been working on uh, a series of knives called the agent and where's where is it it doesn't matter you've seen it i'll show it later uh, but anyway tkl knives can't say enough about how much i like them all right and lastly uh my emotional support knife my esk today was a little bigger than usual actually i had this uh, this is the <clears throat> Spartan Harzi Kukri, so made by Spartan Blades slash, uh, well, produced and distributed by Spartan Blades, made by uh, K-Bar in their professional lineup, designed by Bill Harzi, and uh, what it is, it's just... A, a, a quarter inch of 1095 so beautifully ground and sculpted with this gorgeous handle i just think this thing is amazing uh so no i didn't have this on me but i had it near me you know i had it near me and if i needed it which i never do i never need kukris in my day-to-day -day life but they're good to have around just in case um something i love about about the spartan blades are, are the logos I, I love the hoplite helmet with the crossed arrows of course who doesn't love that but i also love the um pineland the tree there pretty cool and i think uh, that is part of uh, bill harsey's thing he is a logger he comes from a logging family will Har william harsey jr one of the one of the all-time greats in terms of uh, designers of knives for special forces units and and uh, you know military his stuff is and he's had a bunch of his designs made by uh, chris reeve knives by spartan blades uh by by gerber um when gerber was awesome um and many others so william harsey jr is amazing and a badass too a logger you know guy who would climb up into trees with a chainsaw that's pretty that's pretty amazing so that's what i had today a uh, long-winded version of what i was carrying let me know what you had on you and uh and we'll talk i want to know i want to know uh let's see and then we'll get to a surprise knife giveaway but uh i'm putting it out there is 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 there interest in this here uh manticore i know heretic yeah manticore x Let's 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 talk about this for a second. Um, and Dave, let me know if you're interested in the trade. I take it not because uh, you'd probably already had to have this if you were 
interested uh, when these came out. Oh, let's talk about that. Very nice uh, actuation switch with knurling and stepping. And very easy action here. Let me, use, I'll, I'll use it with my, my left hand. Ah, yeah. Well, it is easy action. My, my left thumb is a little, uh, not as strong on the pullback, I got to say. I'm embarrassed to say, but now I have things I need to work on. I thought I was done working on everything. Uh, sort of an art deco look to the uh, fluting in the handle, which I like. And that just really, really nice curvy blade. That's beautiful. Um, yep, so uh, I'm going to put this to the side and uh, and find out what you guys were carrying. Let me know what you're carrying, and let me take a sip of water. Hey, Shredders, what are you guys carrying these days? So if you uh, if you remember, they were very into uh, big fixed blades. And who doesn't love the big fixed blades? Pete Davidson, uh, good to have you here, man. Good day, Bob, Jim, and the rest of the mob. Uh, just on my lunch break, passing a bill through the lower house <laughs> and catching the rest of the show. Good. I hope it all comes out. I uh, hope it all comes out just fine. Good to have you here, man. Uh, Robert Streb, but I'm glad you're over there doing what you're doing. <laughs> Robert Strebin says, hey, Bob, and all you junkies out there. Robert, how are you, sir? Good to have you with us. I uh, see you. You are uh, oh, lacrosse. There it is. Uh, Bob, do you have a favorite out the front knife? And if so, what is it? <laughs> um, you know, oddly enough, I, oh, I have three out the fronts. This manticore is one of them. Uh, I have an Ultra Tech, and I have a Troodon. Not the combat Troodon, but the little one. It's three inches, and for some reason that little com that little Troodon. It, I think that's my favorite out the front. I mean, not out there, not on the market, uh, but in my collection. Uh, on the market, I guess I'd say a G and G Hawk. Um, what is it? Model D now or something? Uh, or no, no, it's called the H and H Deadlock D, right? They're up to D, I think. Anyway, uh, Pete says carrying my Boker slash pole design speed lock today. That's pole of pole force, and he's the guy, the German guy who made the knives for the very last Rambo movie, which was, I gotta say, I love that movie. I love all the Rambo movies; they're all awesome. Uh, but anyway, uh, so many things are yuck about it. Tip down. <laughs> Uh, but it has nice lines. The button lock is smooth, uh, and it's a nice, it's got a nice fiddle factor. That's funny. So many things are yuck about it. And the tip down, I hear you. It's like the, uh, the, um, right here, like the SOCOM elite. And I love it. And I give it a pass cause it's such a great knife, but I always still find it too bad that they haven't, they haven't put that down there. Like they have on the Bravo. SOCOM Bravo, which is uh, still in the is in the case. They put it down here. I bet Microtech could do it too. Uh, Stephen Clayton says, I saw the update for the combatant. I'm liking the current version like you have. Oh, man. Oh, the heart wants what the heart wants, man. <coughs> Mine, he, you know, yeah. he, 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 uh, I would sell it to you, but it's got my logo engraved in it and it has, has a bit of sentimental value. Um, but there's got to be one, you know, it's got to, I don't know if people get rid of their TKLs, but, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Bill Bobby says, uh, I, first of all, good to have you here, man. I don't know if one is more fidgety than the other, but bar locks are at least as fidgety are at least as fidgety for sure well what do you trust more do you do you trust the single coil spring in the in the push button in the button lock or do you trust the dual omega springs people always talking about the omega springs breaking how much are you fidgeting with that thing you got to leave that thing alone sometimes you know uh that's why I've never had Omega Springs break. But then again, you might say, Bob, you don't really use your knives, do you? And you might pick that one up every once in a while. But if you carry it every day and you use it all the time and you fidget with it, <laughs> you're going to break the springs, bro. Uh, Pete Davidson says, when it comes to locks, the mid-mounted back lock is just works so well. 
uh, for me compared to other other locks like the uh, oh, like this. Definitely, definitely uh, here. What you're talking about is that uh, mid mounted mid back lock. And we know that this is super strong. You don't have to have this all the way down here to have it be strong. And we know that because this is a triad lock and that's proven. Uh, here's a buck um, uh, 112 Ranger with that back lock and it's way in the back and it's, you know, definitely makes it a two handed close or a one hand and extraneous surface close as opposed to um, these, which are easy and even fidgety one handed uh, because of the Ricasso effect and you get that on all the demco designed cold steels with the triad lock you get that one-handed action where you can let the the blade drop and as long as your finger is forward in that choil it'll rebound off of that oh i'm doing it i'm doing it i'm looking at the knife and not the camera x cato good to have you here man the masters of defense cqb was one of the early manual production button locks that i can remember you're absolutely right wow that's a deep cut as a matter of fact, I just saw one of those for sale on Blade Forums. Uh, I was just kind of lurking around Blade Forums, looking to see if I could get a deal on a SOCOM Elite Auto, which I could have. And I waited, and it got bought, and I got pissed. Uh, but yeah, that is a good one. That That is a, a good one. But wasn't that an auto? Huh. I guess not. Eugene Page says, love the Spidey compression lock. Left-handed freak friendly. Left-handed freaks friendly. That's funny because I kind of find it uh, a little uh, difficult left-handed. However, I know that you can get something to fit on it. It's only two birthdays. It's two. I know, I know, I know. But it's eight years. It's really eight years, but only two birthdays. I agree. It's not like on the 28th of any other year I celebrate any i don't celebrate any knives knife's birthday except for that one and yeah this is only the second time i haven't totally lost uh touch with reality not completely craig vincent says one of the first knives i ever bought was a button lock i was smitten and hoped our love would last a lifetime but i guess we are who we are and uh turns out i prefer a strong lock like the triad craig i hear you it was like a summer love you know it's like you met her at the at the at the uh you know on summer vacation uh you didn't talk to each other for the first week and then the last week you you tried to cram a whole lifetime into and uh and then she never wrote you back you sucker uh and then you decided from that moment on you're like yeah triad lock why would you mess with anything but a triad lock you know triad locks a keeper not a heartbreaker jason valisquez nice to have you here sir uh yeah my casey uh my knife center exclusive sabenza 31 is double stud Ooh, ooh. and what is the material what's the material on that uh, uh on the handle obviously uh is it an inlay or is it some sort of uh um, sculpted in thing Stephen clayton okay here's his carry rem alliance scourge the mini ta uh, uh okay rem alliance scourge mini tanto tkel fln that's the uh aforementioned neves knives uh, collaboration the knife stalker cg uh that's combat grade the piranha so that's three tkels he's got on him the fmf the accomplice the Guardian, the MR1. Okay, that's right. I remember you carried something like this last week and, and mentioned the combatant last week. I see where you're going. Uh, Regiment Blades, Low Viz Pro, Colonel Blades. Oh, those are cool. Yeah, Colonel Blade. Uh, Riot XOK, Crudo Knives, SD5 LTE, Snag Bit. Okay, those are cool. Those, the, I know. Those are those are cool. Wait, this is a lot of knives, Stephen. These are not all on your person, am I right? Or are they? I mean, have you figured out a way to carry all these? Um, or do you like me? Kind of have a 
uh, stash in your bag too, or, you know, kind of have them all close at hand. Let me know. Let me know if you're carrying all of those fixed blade knives on you, like Lou Diamond Phillips, I am totally impressed. Um, I'd love to be that character in a cowboy movie for sure. This old sword says today's carry the AB knives 301 fixie. I uh, love that knife. That's the 302 though, isn't it? The concept cosmos. <gasps> I need to get that knife too. Uh, and the reason I say that is because it's beautiful <laughs> and that has that cool inline flipper and the beautiful Warren cliff blade and, uh, designed by Paul Munko. He, she's a great designer. Vostid RS chaos, the Bastinelli shadow flipper in L max. Nice. The max ace black mirror in M three ninety and copper carbon fiber, the Hogue Ritter RSK auto in magna cut, and the Night Core EDC 35. Man, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, that's a nice carry. And that uh, the Aaron Bieber knives. If if people don't know Aaron Bieber knives, check him out. AB knives on Instagram or Aaron Bieber knives on Instagram. Stuff is so cool. You've seen mine. You've seen Dave's. Now, get one for yourself. Eugene Page says pocket check. Emerson Quaken. Nice, nice. I always wanted a Quaken or a Persian. Persian first. Uh, Quake in second, but both. I love them both. Blade Ogre says, carrying the Sea Dragon Folding Hunter. Uh, did you see uh, Tobias Gibson's video on his Sea Dragon um, medium toothpick? Uh, there's a difference in the naming convention that he was talking about between Case and Smoky Mountain Knife Works, where this is an exclusive. Uh, you've got the Clever Girl, the Blue Spidey Chef, the M40 15 uh deadbolt that's the crkt uh crawford uh 2023 gec bullet hawk bill very nice the tour uh tour merchant the lt right northern hunter and the bastinelli mako the dino smike at uh, spike and the sleazy ogre two two design two knives of your own design one of your making very cool pete davidson Boker Speedlock, Spiderco Cali 3.5 ZDP. Oh, that's an, I like that. I remember when that came out. Uh, Victorinox Mountaineer with glow scales. Nice Sabatier pairing knife and custom sheath. That's cool. You got a little uh, patina on that. Uh, the Zirconium Olite, Titanium Big One Design, Big One Design or Big Eye Design Bolt Pen. And a Warner Morgan Grand. I don't know what that is. What's a Warner Morgan Grand? Is that a light? Hero Stick says, carried the Hinderer half-track Warney. Love that Warncliffe blade. I love that Warncliffe blade. I love the upward slope to the tip. That's kind of midline instead of a instead of all the way down. Uh, in black and bronze, Summit Knives El Capitan murdered out. That's the one that you sent to me that I borrowed that time. And the Swiss Army Knife Cadet in black a locks. Ooh, very nice. Loving the uh, Victorinoxes lately, especially since I got that little pocket clip hook dangly thing. It's pretty awesome. Pete Davidson, Warner Morgan Cam uh, Grand Camp Knife. Ooh, I need, to, I need to see that. I don't know what that one is. All right, let me show off this knife we're going to be giving away because I have to remind you that all it takes to win this knife is hashtag knife in uh in the chat billy bob uh bill bobby sorry says i grew up across the lake from danny wegman's oh no kidding very nice man i i gotta say i love that grocery store i've never been that way about a grocery store before but yeah i like to go there for my lunch break sometimes just to honey do we need anything for for home you know just to go grocery shopping all right anyway uh here it is it's the ch three eight oh seven uh, thirty five oh seven g10 bl g10 handle blue uh some interesting milling here or it's hard to see if you can see it's like planes different slightly different planes milled in there slightly visible there you go makes it a, a not a contoured handle but it, you kind of get that feeling just from these giant they're like really big chamfers basically and they meet in the middle and they round the thing out uh d2 blade steel it is wickedly sharp wickedly sharp and uh has great action 
the jimping on the back has a nice um not grab. I don't want to say grab. That sounds aggressive. It has. It gives your your thumb a great place. It gives your thumb purchase without tearing it. It's uh, it's not too sharp, but it it's uh, it's good. And then that edge is totally straight. It is totally straight, and uh, you got a great little tanto tip there. So this. Uh, oh, and by the way, that's a three point seven inch blade. Three point seven. Yep. So hashtag knife down in the chat, hashtag knife. You can win, win this and I will send it right out to you. That's thanks to Dave, this old sword blade reviews. Uh, he has given us so many knives, donated so many knives to the channel that we've given away here. So uh, uh, we really definitely a benefactor. We appreciate uh, Benedict Doty. Nice to have you here, Benedict. Uh, carried the giant mouse ace grand today. What do you think of the new... Uh, Okay, this is going to be a terrible sound. Oh, wasn't that bad? What do you think of the new one that's not so grand? I can't remember what they called it, but it's like a smaller version of that. They both are just so nice looking. Uh, X Cato says, <clears throat> today's carry is the Boker CLB G4. Not sure what that is. The Real Steel Ippen and the Vostied Valkyrie. The Valkyrie. I'm wondering if I was thinking of the Valkyrie before um, when we were talking Bosti. Daniel Huff says, today's carry was the Rosecraft Lusahatchee Jack. That's great minds. Think it alike, sir. Spyderco Endura in K390 and a custom Damascus fixed blade crafted by my friend and Georgia knife maker, Diamond Dave Smith. I, I chuckle at Diamond Dave because... Um, I love David Lee Roth or loved him back in the day. Real steel, Epon. Okay. Um, and uh, he went by Diamond Dave. So MR1 is great for uh, from behind stealth threat removal. No doubt. Oh, God. This thing is... What, what? Tell me the handle you have on yours. I love these Burl G10s. This is uh, that ghost, ghost white or ghost gray Burl G10. Um, I love the Burl G10. Tell me which uh, covers you have on yours. Five Doors says, Fatty SNG. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, your collection, man. Every time you mention what you got, I'm like, oh, that's good. Wait, wait, but there was something else there. Um, uh, Boker Schlossberg Barlow. I don't know that one. Uh, but I, I'm betting it's one of the new uh, Barlows that have come out from them recently. And they're uh, with, the, with the copper bolsters and the brown burlap that kukri could be your baguette cutter no kidding you know what all in all i'd say it's a little too thick or you know what i would do i would baton it i would baton the. i wouldn't need so much of a baton i could just use my hands but no one would mind just in the kitchen at the at work someone's gotta you know you gotta figure out some way to split a baguette cobalt says today's carry the steve ryan model five very nice uh also a deep cut uh, Hawk Bill, Sam Edelman, Warrior Quake and Custom Fixed Blade. His knives are so gorgeous. Sam Edelman, you guys, have Edelman Knives, check him out on Instagram. He's one of my favorite follows, uh, especially his, almost all of it is Japanese themed. Um, uh, one off mods, uh, Spider Coat Endura, fully serrated, hollow grind. Love this thing. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's like the <laughs> original police. I want to get the police model. From Spider Co, but it has to be the uh, stainless steel one with the hollow grind uh, and the serrations and the stainless steel handle because that was the very first. And I remember seeing a guy in a bike shop in Philadelphia had one of those in his back pocket, pulled it out to like do something, cut open something, and then put it back in. And that was the first time I'd seen a clip knife, a Spider Co, a uh, um, serrated blade i mean i had art no that's not true i already had a serrated blade on my fury and i had already seen a belt uh spider uh a, a a pocket clip but i was using it like a belt clip so i saw this dude he straightened me out i was like this guy's so cool uh, <laughs> that knife is so amazing so that was one that left an, an impression very early in the early 90s so i that's the knife i gotta get uh if and when i get a police since you asked, 
which you didn't. Pete Davidson uh, says there is always a need for a kukri, Babo. I, I wait, dude. I could not agree more. I could not agree more. Hey, did you see this while I had this out? Because I'm gonna put it put it back. But uh, yeah, my Sog Super Bowie. I love this thing. Look at the lines on this. But I'm gonna put this under here because uh, I just want to dazzle you with that. The, the shiny black blade is so cool. Dave says, didn't have it on me, but had it near me. Uh, can I use that one relative to my cones crap neck biter? Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> Actually, that one you should keep. Oh, the neck biter. That's the big sax. Oh, God, that thing is cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that'll work. You might be stepping beyond with that thing. Kill Kenny, good to have you here. I ground a finger choil on mine. Really like it on your SOG Super Bowie. Because uh, they always have that nice big trade bob. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Bill Bobby, uh, in my pocket, how Hogue deck. Okay, wait, sorry. Sorry, I just got all excited from, from the, cons the the thought of a of a trade that I'm all... All right, let me put this put this over here and uh, put something else out for eye candy and then be mature and read Bill Bobby. Okay, in my pocket now, Hogue Decca. I need to get a Hogue Decca. I think I need to get that Warren Cliff. It is pretty damn sweet. The MKM Flame, the Bird Cara Cara 2 Warren Cliff, and the Olite Arkfeld Pro. Ooh, okay. Uh, the bird Kara Kara Warncliffe, very nice. You know who I've been? Um, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Babbitt. Um, God, I've become such a flake late at night. I'm never like this during the day, I swear. Uh, well, until I think of his name, it's a moot point. Craig Vincent says today was the Cold Steel 8010, the Recon 1 XL serrated. Oh, okay. The Recon 1, the XL serrated Vaquero, the Blue Frenzy, the Broken Skull. So that's one, two, three, four, five Cold Steels. I approve. The Manix 2 Lightweight, the S35 VN Tenacious. That's nice. The Camillus or Camillus Vortex. The Six Leaf SL24 Rough Rider Stoneworks Peanut and the CRKT Spew Necker. Jeez, man. Okay, so you're, Craig, you're running with 11 knives. Or is that no, 12 knives, man? <laughs> All right, man. Close by or on your person? This, this I still need to know this. Dwayne Letterman, nice to have you here, Dwayne. Howdy, all. Dwayne, since you're just showing up, in two minutes, we're going to be giving this knife away to anyone who can actually type hashtag knife in the, uh, in, in the comments, in the uh, thing. And then I will send it out to you. This is D2. This is the CH3807. Uh, they have not begun naming their things, uh, their knives, anything catchier, but it is beautiful. Uh, top notch uh, stonewash D2. Uh, very nice jimping, very nice edge, thin behind the edge, uh, flat ground and uh, bearing action. Very nice blue G10 that that my camera is not quite doing justice, but it is quite gorgeous. So hashtag knife. And in uh, a minute, we will give it away. But there was a comment that I was ignoring just a moment ago, uh, and I would I'd love to address it uh, if it's still there. Uh, if not, I understand, as I am a professional as well. So uh, maybe we just get to this then. Oh, Stephen Clayton, I understand I won't give up my decal knives. So, uh, Stephen, when did you become a devotee? Have you been um, Have you been with him from the start? I was not. I was not with him from the start. And, uh, and then Dave, uh, this old sword, he got the Guardian, and I was like, huh. Oh. And then ever since then, my my like slash love has grown. Uh, Jeremy Nedro, hello, everyone. Hello, Jeremy. How you doing, man? I hope you're ready for the weekend as we all are prepping. Uh, Jason Velasquez says, I had one of my Omegas on my... Wait, I had, had one of my Omegas on my 941 within the first year. 
I don't get this. Wait, Omegas. I'm thinking watch. Uh, uh, can you uh, send me something again? I, I don't know what that meant. <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, Gus Beck says, like, are you talking about a watch? An Omega watch? Uh, Gus Beck says, good evening, Knife Junkies. Well, good evening to you, Gus. Good to have you here. I carried the trusty SOG Power Access, the large Sebenza 31 with black micarta inlay, and a new knife, the Gerber Fastball. I had to try it. Great detent and sharp. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, Gerber, you know, you know Gerber. We don't have to say anything. But they have, they've had a few couple of good ones uh, recently. The Zilch, I thought was great. And a 20 buck knife, $20 knife, I thought... Make this like build it the same way with a better handle material and a bl better blade material, and I'm in all day long. Edgy American says uh, the early Protec button locks were terribler, <laughs> terribler. Okay, I had the old TR4 manual. Okay, so they were bad. Terrib. <laughs> all right, cool. The TR4, that's a nice knife. Uh, do I have my, one of my, I thought I pulled. Okay. No. Pete Davidson says the first button lock I ever bought disappointed me until I put a, a coil spring in it. And now you have to hold on to it for dear life. Love it. Okay. Let's do this, Jim. Let's do this. We have, we have who we have and we can't force anyone. You know, if you don't, if you don't want the knife, you don't want the knife. Uh, you could give it away as a gift if you don't want the knife. Um, that's, uh, you know, Christmas is coming up. No, it's not. I'm just kidding. Uh, Robert Strevin says, so, uh, Bob, so my girlfriend got me a cheap knife for my birthday. She is so sweet, LOL, but it's not one I like. So how long do you have to show that I'm carrying it on me before I can store it? Oh, oh, uh, you're a good man, Robert. You're a good man. Um, I would say. I would say this is what you do. You give it a place of honor. You carry it for a couple of weeks uh, along with whatever else you actually want to carry, but you give it a place of honor, like on your dresser. I'm not sure if this is, you said your girlfriend, I'm not sure if you live together or whatever. I'm sure she sees your dresser from time to time. Give it a place of honor, like where you keep your watches or you keep things that are special um, that you don't have on you all the time. And that way you know, you can, you can say, well, you know, I've been carrying this for weeks and then I thought I lost it and means too much. So, well, I mean, that's a lie. You don't even have to lie. Uh, you could just, you could just say, I, I want to keep it here and think of you. And that's not a lie. And if it is, you need to break up because <laughs> you want to think of her. So that's what you do. You put it up there. Uh, and I speak from experience. Let me just say, uh, okay. So let's do this, Jim. All right, pulling out. Any anyone else need um, knife uh, dating advice? Let me know. Boy, I've been doling this out for years. All right, we ready? Let's see, CH three eight zero seven, and they got some little uh, characters on there. Okay, let's uh, pull up the wheel, or oh, it's not the wheel, the automatic name generator. Okay, hashtag knife is there. In three, two, and one. Here it goes. Ah, I like I like being able to see everyone who's uh, who's entered in. Have it. Oh my god, it does that all the time. <laughs> all right, have a nice day. Sorry, it looked like it was you, but it is you, Eugene Krabs, and I'm very happy about that too. Uh, so I will happily send this. And, and I think I have a little packet of stickers laying around I can throw in for you. And uh, so send me your um, address, thenifejunkie.com at, or thenifejunkie at Gmail. Send it to that, thenifejunkie at Gmail, please. And I will get that and I will send this your way. Uh, just your mailing address, please. Awesome. Uh -huh. Awesome. 64 watching, 34 playing. Not bad. Not bad. You can't, you know, you can't. It's not a knife for everyone. For instance, I myself recently have been very, very into washers again. And, uh, you know, you've heard me mentioning that. Okay. I think we have to uh, show off some of these cool new knives I've gotten. Uh, three of them over this past week. And uh, the first one was a gift. 
and I, I somewhat unexpected, uh, or I guess I forgot I was supposed to be getting it and it showed up and it was in a bigger box. And I was like, Oh, what is this? And it was what I'm about to show you. All right. Scarboy, good to have you here, Scarboy. I carry a Kershaw Emerson CQC 6K. Nice choice. A little heavy, but uh, uh, what I've trained with for years. Sometimes worry about the strength of the frame lock, but hopefully I won't have to test it. Uh, you know, I don't, Scarboy, I don't think you need to worry about that. That frame lock is a steel frame lock. And, you know, I, I you would, I, I think your hand would give way before that lock would give way. Unless you're, you know, climbing and using it to climb. I really think that that lock will hold you in good stead. It's Kershaw. It's great. It's also an Emerson design. And uh, you've worn it in, obviously. And it's uh, a steel frame lock. I bet you're fine with it. Like maybe even more fine than with a liner lock from an actual Emerson. So uh, good choice. And they do make a trainer for that, right? Jeremy Nedro says, I'm carrying the Mannix 2XL, the Spyderco Tenacious, the Colonial Knives Best Bushcrafter, and a Swiss Army Knife Cadet. Well, that's a good round carry. That's a nice, yeah, that's a good, like, you got all your bases covered. Xcado says, uh, I think the mod, oh, <clears throat> I think the methods of, de methods of defense, right? That's what MOD was. Methods of defense. Uh um cqb had both manual and auto version i know for sure the blackhawk version had both oh cool yeah that's right blackhawk bought the bought the rights to all of those designs uh they had a masada ayub design they had a michael janich design and they had oh masters of defense not not whatever i said before uh Stephen Clayton Jr. Yeah, that was all there. It was Masters of Defense designing knives for that purpose. Those were cool, man. They're short-lived. Uh Stephen Clayton says, Yes, I carry them all every day. Sapper is on my backpack, dude. All right. Well, you're one of my new heroes. That's awesome. I love it. Especially the fact that they're T Kells and I love T Kells. Well, you know, I'll sell you that when it's when there's more. Uh, and, and I'm not talking about the combatant. I was going to show you the other one. Um, but, oh, the sapper. We have a couple. Uh, Will B has a sapper. And uh, and uh, so does uh, Dave. I would love to be a part of that club, maybe on the next run. Uh, Will B had a light carry today. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Grimsmo Norseman, ProTech, a custom, a California custom knife show, Mordax. Uh, Spiderco Mannix 2XL. Kaiser Begleiter XL, Axial Shift, TKL Night Stalker CQC, Olight Arkfeld UV, and the Karis Bolt V2. Two, so two people in the in the chat carrying Night Stalkers, uh, and a couple of uh, like a bunch of people who who own who own TKL knives, and a couple of you who own Nova ones, like Byron here. Carrie is the Jack Wolf knives Hogtooth Nova one. Thank you, thank you, thank you for carrying it. Uh, the um, and for buying it. Uh, the uh, traditional pocket knives, Lake Champlain Barlow jig tie with a clip point, very nice. And the off grid all day necker. Uh, that's cool. I, I, you know, I felt moved to pull this out tonight. I love off grid, and uh, I've been looking at what I have, and I have uh, some duplicates. Uh, in the folder department, like actually just one duplicate in the folder department that I'm going to offload. But this I had to pull out because I was like, oh, I want to put some buoys on the desk here. And since I changed uh, my whole my storage configuration, I was like, I don't want to forget about this now that it's in a different drawer. So pulled it out. Pete Davidson says the blackjack Warner Moran Rio Grande camp knife made in Japan. Oh, okay. Oh, that sounds awesome. Okay. I remember when blackjacks were being made in Japan and uh, that whole, that whole thing sounds good because that means it was probably designed by uh, Mike, um, Mike, Mike, tell me guys, help me. Who's the guy uh, at the head of Bark River Knives? 
uh, who who also was responsible for Blackjack back in the mic, but not Mike Baker. Uh, Edgy American says, CH was the OG Chinese bu uh, budget knife, probably making all this new stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, I, I think that's what it is, and and they haven't quite gotten around to uh, to to figuring out good names for their good knives. Broken AZ knives. I got the Max Ace Neptune, the Mocenary MK01, the Dip and Twist Mini Dipper, Sobriety Coin, and a Forest Hank. Okay, congratulations on the Sobriety Coin, the Forest Hank. Hanks, I have not gotten into. I mean, every day I carry a bandana in my back pocket, but I've never gotten a Hank Hank. We, I had an Olight Hank I gave away. Um, but I'm sorry, Jim, can you go back? I'm, I just wanted to, oh, loyal group. Good to have you here. And no, no need to apologize for your tardiness, sir. I don't feel tardy. Uh, Mocenary MK1. Yeah. What's the Mocenary? Who is Mocenary? Is that a custom knife? And then dip and twist mini dipper. What on earth is that? I'd love to know. Very, very interested. Uh, EDC says today's EDC was the midnight Jack fat carbon, dark matter, copper. That looks beautiful. And in pictures, that carbon fiber looks like burl wood to me. Gus Beck says, hashtag knife. Thanks, Bob, Jim, and Dave. By the way, I'm so happy for you to get that amphibian. I enjoyed the video 10 folders uh, for 25 years this morning on my commute. Oh, awesome. Thank you. I love my amphibian. Well, then let me pull out my amphibian because that's the next knife here. Oh, I didn't show off the first one. <laughs> I was just talking about Mike Janich and I went off the the deep end but let's let's show the amphibian first look at this oh gosh okay blade ogre says yep smoky mountain knife work calls it sea dragon and on the box when it shows up it's like burnt corn cob jig caribbean blue bone yeah sea dragon definitely sounds better yeah they did their own uh did their own marketing on that and uh came out wise speaking of which this has stolen my heart this is the um, amphibian. This is the one with G10. They they have one with uh, aluminum handles or one with G10 handles. I believe they're the same price. Uh, this is the G10, and it is so nice. Great action on this. Just incredible milling. This ram lock is outstanding. It's like a bar lock, but bar lock zilla instead of a bar it's like an entire block with a knot with a little uh, protrusion that sticks into the little notch on the tang there uh right there you know like a bar lock does but this is like super secure now the amphibian uh pattern was something that Microtech was making in their Vero Beach days, like very early on, but they only made like five or 10. They made like a, a shockingly few amount of them. And then there were unicorns. Every once in a while, uh, he'd make a few of these, he meaning um, uh, Anthony Marfione, um, but only with the Ramlock and this sort of uh, iteration has has this become a regular um catalog fixture and i'm so so psyched it it is because a this this recent most recent design of it is like really beautiful the old amphibians are cool but this is, takes it to another level uh and the manufacturing is awesome and it's american made and uh it's got that m390 mk proprietary steel with the um, apocalyptic finish on it this clip is so awesome. I love the clip. I don't need deep carry. Um, certainly, I like the jimping on the clip. I even like the branding because I think their logo is just so cool. It's got a little birth month there. Also, with the uh, when I was talking about the um, Ramlock stitch that uh, Jock from Jock's Knife uh, was loaning me, um, I was talking about, I was calling them FU screws because they're so big that they pop up and and they were actually uh, using those same screws in a deep carry pocket clip so that your pants were necessarily going over those gigantic screws. Uh, but here on this knife, it doesn't matter because they're totally out of the path of the clip. They actually aid in drawing the knife itself because they, 
they are so audaciously high they give you something to grab onto uh, when you're extracting it from your pocket uh in any other circumstance any other knife i hate uh a thumb stud like that i do not like oblong or weirdly shaped thumb studs except in this case this just works for me and uh it even i'm not even talking aesthetically now now i mean even just when rolling out that blade slowly uh all of that surface area all of that terraced surface area really especially this long part really makes for a comfortable easy slow roll and it also flips out uh, incredibly just like shoots out so uh, this is an amazing knife i'm so happy about this it's also a four inch blade <coughs> so right in my wheelhouse and then um i love microtex serrations i have them on almost all of my microtex except for the socom bravo and the socom elite so on my two out the fronts i have a whole entire edge top edge serrated and then on this um mm, Mm -mm -mm. love them i love the serrations so uh and it really works on that recurve and yes uh in my video you got to check out this week's supplemental the one that dropped yesterday because i i, I use 15 knives and really talk or wait yeah 15 uh, dozen knives and talk about 25 years it's a dozen knives talk about 25 years of collecting and these are like 12 knives that just really uh represent corners turned and uh and it starts with the with the um emerson commander and it ends with the microtech amphibian and they have very similar profiles overall so it's one of those as much as things change uh they stay the same oh i wanted to show you this unlike most bar locks this is working on a spring screw right there there it is hang on blow the lint out where is it there it is you see that coil spring there that's what it's all relying on that coil spring so you're not gonna have to worry about it all right last my state last in the state of the collection here uh fixed blade so did anyone see um my interview with uh jed hornbeak anyone anyone well, I'll show you what I got from Jed Hornbeek. But first, let me show you what I got from uh, Mike Janich and Spider Co. I got the Micro Jimbo, which is so cool. I'm so excited to have this. Uh, this, uh, you know, I just recently had Michael Janich on the show. And I was talking about how excited I am to get this. And afterward, he's like, maybe I can see if Spider Co can send you one. And I said, oh, I couldn't possibly accept except unless it arrived at my door and then i would definitely have to and it did and so i did so this is the small version of the uh there's the yojumbo jimbo and i got the yojumbo around here somewhere right here there it is with the yojumbo so a small version uh inspired by towns like chicago where um michael janich has spent some time uh chicago he would take he used to take uh, uh yojimbos and grind them down either well for himself or for other people or he would also take a um what do you call it uh endura or a delica and and cut it down to the proper length i think it has to be two and a half inches and turn it into a warren cliff and uh so they decided over at spider co why not just offer this uh, for those people who do live in Chicago or do live in extremely restrictive environments, you know, and so you got an under three inch blade here. And here, let me show it with the Sabenza just for size. So there it is with the Sabenza, but very, very uh, small blade, but fits in the hand perfectly. Uh, that thumb is just naturally sits right there on top to apply pressure and that straight edge we we all know why and how that straight edge is such a boon for slashing 
how you really get the uh, the most out of uh, your blade when the edge is straight like that if you're going to be slashing and uh, thrusting and all the rest. So a really nice fit. Now we see something different here. This is, <coughs> excuse me, flat ground. It's the only flat ground knife in the series. Now here's the fixed blade, the Ronin, also a great knife. Will be, is it Will be? Yeah, Will be carries one of these, I think. Uh, with the custom sheath. But this is a great knife uh, that fits in. It's sort of in the middle here. Look at that. Look at that beautiful family of worn clips there. So, uh, yeah, all hollow except for this one. The idea behind this is uh, with that small blade, if they had gone hollow grind, the tip would be so fragile uh, and, you know, it would be difficult to, or I, I should say it would be very easy to break. Really awesome action um, where, you know, it doesn't, it, this takes a considerable amount of pressure to close, but if it's, if the lock is depressed, the thing swings shut. It's sweet. It's sweet. Just has to wear in a little bit. I put a little bit of uh, lube on it today and man, I'm digging it. It's a really, really good utility knife. I showed it to my wife, and she's like, oh, that's cool. It looks like a box cutter. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> it does. It really does. All right, so this is the Yojimbo, Yojumbo, Ronin, Micro Jimbo family. And, uh, but this, this is still my all-time favorite. Just the Yojimbo, straight up. Yojimbo 2. I love the Yojumbo 2. Uh, I love the Yojumbo also, but that... Uh, Classic Yojimbo, you cannot beat. All right, got one more. Got one more new knife that I'm so excited to show you. Anyone have the Micro Jimbo? And uh, anyone like this knife? I haven't seen too much press about it. I mean, I know when it came out, uh, some people covered it, uh, but I haven't heard of a lot of people having and carrying these. Uh, but addictive little little knife for this awesome action and fidgety nature of it. Yep. If you have to uh, entrust your life to a two, just a little bit more than two inch blade, micro Jimbo is the way to go. Uh, that steel handle police also has a fully sharp. What? Oh, oh, oh. Can also have a fully sharpened swedge if you like. Oh, that makes sense because that whole front portion fits right into the, uh, Right into the handle. Excato says the Boker X uh, CLB GL was a four inch folding worn clip designed by. Oh, that's right. Chad Los, ba Los Banos uh, way back when. Personally, uh, my favorite design of his. I remember I remember one named after him, uh, but I don't remember the CLB. There was a. a uh, a knife that that had his that bore his name. Stephen Clayton says, "Let me know if you ever change your mind on that combatant. I will, I will, I will." But it would also you would have to deal with the with the knife junkie logo on it, though you could scratch it. Mm, I don't know if you could actually. Man, that Sog Bowie, he says, loyal loyal group. It is a it is a honey. It is a beautiful knife. Dan Hazard says, "Right pocket dagger resident." Okay. Oh, that's that new one. Uh, the And the AD20.5. Okay. I was going to say you had an AD20 and a dagger in the same uh, dagger resonant in the same pocket, but the 0.5 made all the difference. Left pocket, bench made bug out, back left, CJRB, pyrite. What a great one. That's the name I was trying to remember before. I said something else uh, when we were talking about button locks. Civivi de, de Art neck knife, Scout carry tops. Lil Fixer, that's a cool knife, and belt right side, Nightcore MH25 Pro. Nice, Dan. That's good. How do you like that dagger resident? Um, I I I had a dagger and I don't anymore. Stephen Clayton Jr. says I stumbled across T Kel in October 2023. Okay, so pretty new. So now he he, he uh, like this is something that came out of uh, pandemic for him. He has not been at it for all that long, but he is killing it and expanding like 
doing a great job expanding. Beach, beach. Good to have you here, beach, beach. Tell her it's sentimental and then keep it in a case or or somewhere safe. Yes, exactly. But somewhere like on display. And she'll become eye bl she'll become blind to it eventually. Yeah, and it's good. And you want to do that because you know what? It's good for you to see it instead of just relegating it to the junk drawer or just to the drawer or having it out of sight. It's good for you to see it to remind yourself, um, okay, this girl, um, you know, we might have our disagreements, but this girl cared enough to try to get me something um, that I would like in my realm. And that's, you know, have you tried buying her a pair of shoes or a handbag? I mean, like, it's not easy. You do have to do some research. So put it up there so you can remember the the quality of the person you're dealing with that's more important than the knife itself you know she you can you can train that into her you know with subtle you know magazines leaving magazines open to certain pages that used to work back in the day <laughs> uh have a knife day damn it i'm like that lotto winner where they published numbers and then said whoops and posted them. yes yes yeah it landed on you for like a second a solid second. I thought we were going to see the confetti. Craig Vincent says, those knives were carried on my person, Bob. Usually a minimum of seven, but I'm known to carry up to 14. Uh, <coughs> it's now a thing at social gatherings to guess how many knives I have with me. Cargo pants rule. I love that, Craig. I love that. I uh, When I went to work today, I had this on my belt and I, and I had, I didn't have a, I usually have like a light jacket on me because it's so damn cold at work. And I walked up to my wife and this was just on my belt. And I was like, I'm I'm normalizing it at work. And she said, no, you don't. And I was like, oh, okay. So I zipped up. But, but yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. You gotta, like the more normal it is, the more people see it. You know, it's like anything else, it's like training a dog or training a child that Sometimes there's a lot of overlap. Um, same thing with training your coworkers. It's like, what? Oh, it's just Bob. You know, would you rather hear this from me? Or let's see, this this is my, uh, the guy who sits next to me is this. With his pen. I mean, you can hear him a mile away. Uh, so it's just Bob flipping his knives, you know. Okay, Will B says, what are you thinking for the heretic? Uh, I, I am thinking 250, but I was, I was also thinking uh, I might have a trade on my hands. I think I do have a trade on my hands with the actual knife I want, uh, Will. So uh, uh, now I'm, now I'm uh, you know, I'm thinking that's where I'm going, but uh, why? What are you thinking? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not negotiating it. I had a price, and that's the price. Uh, but a, a trade would work handily as well. Uh, so you're serious about the Manticore, huh? It is a it's a pretty cool knife, Will. I got to say, Re Larson. Uh, <laughs> I carried a Microtech MSI polymer and a Bastinelli Anomaly. That's a fine choice. Watch a Tag Heuer Formula One. That's cool. Is that the one that uh, Steve McQueen wore? The square one. That's cool. Pete Davidson, I was told those early MOD knives were made by Microtech. My Ayub Tanto and button lock folder, don't know the name, are quality pieces. Oh, that's cool. That would make sense because they they really have share a similar aesthetic to the Microtechs of the day. I love the old exotic Microtechs. I don't remember all of their names, but there were some crazy shapes. Beautiful hawk bill. There's that one. Oh, what the fuck was it? It was like a recurve Tonto, weird recurve Tonto Warncliffe. Microtech has some really cool knives in its past. I mean, I love its knives currently. Love the knives on offer now. But the stuff they were making in the late 90s, early 2000s are wild. And and but but tactical, practical, like looking, but just just exotic they're very cool mike stewart thank you thank you mike stewart uh is the guy who started blackjack and he also uh started bark river knives and now when you buy a blackjack knife 
Um, if it's, you know, a $200, $300 blackjack knife, it's made by um, Park River Knives. Though I think there is still a part of it that's making the cheap Chinese stuff. But I'm not sure if they're the same thing. I don't know what happened there. Have a Knife Day says, I just donated my Cayman XXL to my VFW post as a raffle prize. <clears throat> that's a cool raffle prize, man. And that's a very generous gift. Someone's going to be psyched. And you know that 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 crowd will, will dig it. Craig Vincent says, Bob, I sold three knives this week, but I bought three. It was a push. That's funny. Uh, that's good to be able to sell knives. I've kind of lost, lost where to, where to sell them. I mean, I know of numerous places, but I can't make up my mind. Mosinary is another Chinese manufacturer. Dip and twist is a custom fixie maker. The mini dipper is a neck knife. Oh, cool. I like that. Okay. So I, I have a custom knife here to show you. Uh, this is uh, new and, uh, I, I, this is like the amphibian. I'm like a beyond, it's beyond words. Uh, my feelings or, or, or my love for this knife, my like, I, I need to be careful with the word love because I actually do love people around me. And there is a difference, but let's just, we all know what I'm talking about. This is the necromance from Jed Hornbeak knives. And it is a perfect little fighter. And by little, I mean like that blade is four point four and a half inches, four point seven five inch. So it's below five inches in blade length. Um, but this thing, so I, I'm considering it a little fighter. It's amazing. And my definition of a fighter is an asymmetrical double-edged knife. Uh, it doesn't have to have a symmetrical edge. It doesn't have to have a symmetrical plat um, profile, but it has to have a um an asymmetrical profile and a double edge and this does this has a scandy ground swedge so that's you know sharp as your mora and then here uh we have a hollow ground straight edge and then it goes into this uh at the thick uh tippins uh, thickens up a little bit at the tip look at that god that swedge is gorgeous and you have sort of a secondary Tonto-esque uh, Tonto tip. You have incredible jimping here because this grip in, in um, saber grip, it is perfect. This is perfection in hand. Like it, This is like that pair of shoes that you have that almost feel better to have on your feet than, than to have no shoes on at all. Like this almost feels better to have in hand than nothing. <laughs> It, it's so made for that uh, for that saber grip. It feels wonderful. But then uh, you come up and kind of choke up a little bit into a Filipino grip, put, putting the thumb on that forward run of jimping and choking up on the handle a little bit. And this is incredibly comfortable. All of this is so smooth and so comfortable. And the size of this finger choil and this peak it really does act like a um, uh, sub hilt there. And then in reverse grip, because I carry this in the waistband at three o'clock. This is too big for me to carry uh, appendix. So I carry this at the three o'clock sort of canted forward. And uh, it's set up for reverse grip. So it's going to come out like this. And perfect landing place for the thumb you get uh, that that peak for your thumb to curl over um great jimping there which really actually is great for the palm when it's in this in this grip but uh if you're someone who holds their their fix uh their fixed blade in reverse grip like this with your thumb there i mean i've seen that before it looks uh that jimping is good but man there you go it just feels great in hand. Uh, 3V and tumbled finish. Very cool logo there. Looks like a, a, a bird with a plague mask. Uh, it looks like a bird. It's a bird skull, but it looks like a plague mask. So what do you think of this? Is it gorgeous? Am I, am I the only one? I just, I, I love this. He made three of them. Um, and this was the one that I would have chosen. And, or, 
he had sold the other two by the time I decided I wanted to get one. So I got the one I wanted. The other one had a black handle. And then there was a third, uh, which is scanned, uh, not scandy, but uh, chisel ground. So uh, this side had a deep hollow grind and then a flat portion up front. And then you flip it over. It's totally flat here. And he had, I think, seven little holes, uh, divots. And it looked symbolic of something. This is 3V blade steel. I cannot, I can't tell you through pictures about how the manufacturing of this feels. You know, this is uh, one guy with a with a mill. It's a non CNC mill, and so he makes very very small batches of knives, three five, and they're so well finished. They're so well finished. I can't get over how this thing feels in hand and how beautifully designed it is. All right, I've, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm done waxing poetic. I just, I love it. And I, I feel reinvigorated. Like this knife has gotten me all psyched about, about um, fixed blade. I mean, a folding tactical folding modding model fold. Modern folding tactical knives. This knife has, and then this one is, kind of just perfect for what I've always been looking for a, a small fighting blade. It's, but not too small. So really nice, really nice knives. I'm very, very lucky and very grateful uh, that the, that I can afford to get some of these things and that other people send me things because well, I'm just very grateful. Uh, Bill Bobby says that Janich interview was great. Was going to watch uh, for a few minutes, but stayed up late. Then I got sucked in. Thanks. Oh, my pleasure. He's a fascinating guy. I mean, we, uh, I, I would love to have him on sometime just to talk about stuff he's done in the past, like, like, like searching Vietnam for, for POWs and, and all the language stuff, uh, you know, spy stuff he's done. I'm sure, he can't talk about a lot of it, but still, it's very cool. Uh, Ree Larson says, I wish the micro Yojimbo had a finger cut out similar to the cold steel tough light to allow a full purchase grip. Oh, wait, let me think. Tough light. I got the tough light up. So wait, what do you mean? What do you mean? So let me read this again. I wish the micro Jimbo had a finger cut out similar to the cold steel tough light. So right Oh, 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 I get what you're saying. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, this this one, this one, okay, I, I have medium-sized hands, which to me means sometimes large gloves work and sometimes small gloves work. Uh, so here, I can get four fingers on there. I I, I do like using this front bit. Um, but it does feel very good in hand. It feels very sure, sure in hand, but now I'm trying to think of exactly the handle contours of my, um, of my cold steel. Uh, the, I, I keep that up in the, in the bathroom and now I can't remember exactly what it looks like, but it does feel sure in hand. Um, this knife does. But if you have giant hands, it might be an issue. Robert says, uh, hey, Bob, I'm just curious if you have a Rambo knife that has all of its belongings in it. I had one when I was younger, but it got stolen from me. That sucks. I'm thinking about buying me one for old time's sake. I do not. I, I had a cool one that got stolen from me. Uh, I used to keep it in my car. My mom got it for me. It wasn't the old Rambo one, but it was a hollow handle one. The old Rambo ones, I had a Fury, a big stainless steel Fury. I gave to my cousin eventually. Uh, and then and then I had the one that we all had with the big bulbous compass on the back and the bottle opener and the blade uh, with the tang that's about that long. And who knows where that ended up, you know. So I would like to get I would like to get a, a, a big boy Rambo knife, you know, like a one uh, like a good one. Uh, maybe even a uh, a D bad one because I, I don't really want the hollow handle anyway. Uh, Stephen Clayton says, when I was active duty, it was a knife in every pocket. Since retirement, it's still a knife and or gun in every pocket. 
love it. I love it. Always armed or never unarmed, as uh, Lynn Thompson would say. I mean, even in the house, walking around, got to have something on you. I mean, not only to do ch whatever chore might pop up in the monument so you're not going to find one, but just in case, who knows, man? Who knows? And you want to be scrambling for a knife or a gun if someone's coming through the door. Pete Davidson says, I have only once convinced a co-worker to get a pocket knife. Two weeks after our conversation, she had a delicate clip to her apron. Champion, not only did you... Yeah, man, nicely done. Well, you know, I find a good thing to do is a gateway gateway knives. Um, you know, you don't want to you don't you don't want to buy that delica for someone you're not sure if they're going to carry it. Uh, but if you get them, you know, give them something from your own collection that you're that is inexpensive and they like it, then they start trading up. Byron says Got to cut out early. Thanks, Bob. Jim Junkies. Have a great weekend and see you on Sunday. Bye, all. Hey, Byron, have a wonderful weekend and uh, uh, enjoy it. We'll see you here next week. Ryan Vest. Hey, guys. How is everyone? Ryan, it's great to have you here, man. We're all doing pretty well. Uh, Stephen Clayton says, Necromance is a nice knife. It is a nice knife. And knowing your taste, Stephen, I mean, I'm starting to, starting to uh, get an idea of your taste. I'm not surprised you'd like this. Check out Jed Hornbeek's other stuff. He's got some cool, uh, right now in stock, I, I believe he has a couple of really cool uh, push daggers. The, the push daggers I discovered late at Blade Show. David Helka, it's beautiful. Uh, I agree. Thank you, David. And nice to have you here, sir. Jesse says, looks great. Yeah, and feels great. Looking good. Feeling good, Todd. Anyone know what that's from? Uh, Ryan West says, you can definitely love a knife. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, really, some of them, the, the sentimental knives, you know, like you can be sentimental about anything, you know. Um, but if it's a knife, you know, I have stuff that my grandpa gave me that's not knives. Um, but since I love knives and I loved my grandpa, those things kind of are the most meaningful. Those in his artwork, he made a lot of cool, like the, uh, the lady. I know you've all seen the lady. She used to be behind me. Uh, David Helka says, I like the idea of being able to knife fight. I think I'm going to look if there are any classes or training around. But yeah, look for Filipino martial arts. Uh, some Krav Maga. Uh, you can do some edge weapon stuff uh, that I've experienced, but it, it, it was a little bit further along. Uh, but yeah, anything Filipino, Kali. Um, and then some schools, like a lot of Kempo Karate schools, have some Kali. Um, and and uh, honestly, knife, knife fighting and learning how to knife fight is really, really fun. Um, and it's a self-perfection endeavor. You know, there's there's in martial arts, there's the self-preservation stuff that you train and there's the self-perfection stuff that you train. Self-preservation stuff is the ugly stuff, the stuff that you don't Im imagine in your dreams when you're when you're fantasizing about using your martial arts. It's not the stuff that you use. You know, it's a kick to the balls. It's a jab to the eyes. It's a, um, you know, whatever is going to work in the moment. Um, that's the self-preservation stuff. The self-perfection stuff are the complicated drills that people do to, um, and, and then you'll see people, you know, fights don't look like that. You'll never use that. Well, you're using the attributes that you're building in doing those drills. You got to have both. And not, learning how to knife fight is a lot of self-perfection. It's a lot of attributes development. And um, you really, I think you have to be careful about seeking out, like if you want, um, seeking out instruction that that has a healthy balance where you're learning uh self-preservation with a knife as well not uh, not just like really sweet fun flashy fun to drill alone or with a partner collie moves but direct uh and and indirect responses to attacks that are are final because you know when you're um messing around with knives and someone who's highly motivated um it's just, you know, obviously it's extremely dangerous. So boom.
uh anthony m so, so uh in summary yes seek out that place and find it um and and do do a little research on the place and talk to the other students and make sure it's not a freaking cult man i've been i've seen that a little bit you know oh it's great in here and then you want you know, like that guy just fell like he was not thrown he fell anyway uh, Anthony M says, what's up? Anthony M, how are you? Sorry for the long-windedness uh, before greeting you. Just made it home from work. Oh, good. Got to got to get that paper. Uh, I've got more bar locks than button locks, so I guess I prefer bar locks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking, uh, you know, it's, 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 <laughs> it's button lock to bed, bar lock to wed. You know, it's like the bar lock to me seems a little more stable and steady, uh, but the button lock's a little more thrilling, a little more fun. Will B says, my XM24 is under my pillow right now. Will, that gives me the warm fuzzies, man. And I know yours is the yours is the uh, Sponto Battlefield pickup. Loyal Group says, Bob, if you ever have a moment, moment, check out Wilson Custom Knives. Oh, you mentioned him. Sam Wilson builds some bulletproof hollow-handled knives. Hang on. I think... I think I tried to write that down last week and it ended up blurring on my computer. So I'm going to write that down here. Hollow handle. And his name is Sam Wilson. Okay. Boy, that was, that was some exciting viewing right there. It's like every time we watch something and it's some guy, it's a spy and he's on his computer for more than like, 20 seconds i'm like why are we sitting here watching the dude on his computer figuring this out i'm on my computer all day i don't want to watch some guy on his computer all right i want to see him do spy stuff you know like shoot a guy with a pen or or, or rappel out of a, a window uh sword xxxy nice to have you here sir good day checking in ah checking in late today got a gambler bowie on my bed or by my bed oh dude you've mentioned that before that's the uh, Ontario Gambler designed by uh, Bill Bagwell. Steven says, my theory for martial arts training and fighting is learn the fundament fundamentals, then hone them to your natural reaction. Yeah, we were just talking. Um, who was I just talking with? Just talking with someone about that, about uh, learning, you know, like the the dangerous guys, the guy who practices those those three to five techniques thousands of times, and they're basic and they're fundamental for a reason. Fundamental for a reason, not just not simple, but fundamental. Pete Davidson, like, yeah. Uh, Pete Davidson says uh, in Australia, Gil Hibbon knives are coveted by Kempo practitioners. My old boss has an Alaska, Alaska Skinner signed by the man himself. So Gil Hibbon trained in Kempo karate. Um, he knew Ed Parker and he also knew Elvis Presley. And uh, he designed two Kempo knives. One of them looks like a kind of a stylized version of. Of. It kind of looks like a stylized version of a, of a um, Randall model number 14 attack. And then he did a second one, which uh, looked more like a barong. It had a, more of a leaf, leaf shaped blade. Um, and uh, they both were cool. And then, and then he had a couple of the Highlander bu uh, buoy was cool. And he did a cool dagger. And then everything else to me that Gil Heaven did that was mainstream was just a little too far out there in terms of uh in terms of whack uh in, in terms of fantasy knife style though he did that didn't he do the Rambo 3 knife was that him I could be mistaken Andrew Hondo uh good to have you here Andrew Apache knife fight is very is let me start that again uh, Apache knife fighting is the very best knife fighting Apache native martial art on the planet. Uh, it is to the U S special forces, AKA Apache native martial arts, guerrilla warfare. Ooh, that sounds, yeah, I, I'd buy that. I, I, I believe that, um, I've seen, so I did one, I remember having one technique shown to us somewhere in my martial arts uh, must have been at the Jeet Kune Do school I went to in um, New York, 
I'm guessing. But uh, I remember like this one technique being billed as an Apache technique uh, by the person who was giving a seminar uh, who was come who was visiting. And I remember very clearly uh, that it was a cool technique. It was harder for me to do on my partner because he was shorter, but it it, it required kind of uh, going under the arm like after you stab and, and you're kind of um, you kind of got him trapped. You go under the arm and then you break his elbow over your back. I thought that was so cool. And then, you know, getting in and out of that was very fluid and circular and it looked cool as hell. And uh, I imagined it would look great in a movie or something, but I don't know how legitimately uh, it was an Apache technique. Craig Vincent, Bob, I always got the words martial and marital mixed up. An important thing for a fella to know when married. Yes, yes, sir. The marital arts are, are uh, to require a more sensitive soul. Uh, Beach Beach says blacked out um, USMC fighter in the nightstand. Oh, I love it. Black knives matter. Yes, yes. I got in, in my nightstand. It's been ever since 1987 or 88 it's been the uh, cold steel uh tanto the six inch uh, i'm uh andrew hondo says i'm part apache we have our own martial art with knife fighting god i'd love to learn some about that that sounds so cool yeah and i i i, I don't know uh but did the apaches were they uh much into tomahawks um because i bet knife and tomahawk fighting together uh have a knife day says i took a class with robert redfeather who also teaches apache knife fighting Ooh, okay that was cool did uh, that must have been an awesome class hey steven how's it going sir good to have you i carried a kershaw back in the day and it made my manager's butt pucker i think it was the action more than having the knife yeah because that's the speed save it's almost like an, a switchblade Good to have you here, man, as always. Uh, Pete Davidson's uh, Hibben Karate Fighter and Alaska Skinner are the ones that you're thinking of, I'm sure. Uh, pretty sure he did the Rambo 3 and 4 knives as well as knives for the first Expendables. Yes, he did. He did the, he did the long, straight, uh, like, Texas toothpick one that uh, Dolph Lundgren carried. And uh, But I know that he called... Uh, I know that at one point he was calling them the Kempo one and the Kempo two knives. Uh, they were definitely named after the martial art, which I thought was funny at the time. Cause I was like, man, I, cause I would, I had been doing Kempo for a while at that point. I was like, I'd never been exposed to knife stuff. Uh, some uh, empty hand knife disarming stuff, which is God, man, that's just, that's some dangerous stuff to teach. Um, at least the stuff I've always been taught, except for the stuff I'm learning right now. There's one empty hand thing that seems like a good thing to do, uh, but it's the last, you know, it's like you're empty handed against a wall and someone's trying to stab you. Like you, you got no choice. You got to try this thing. Um, and to me, it's the only thing that's like worked when pressure tested um, in terms of empty hand. Cause like, it's going to be remarkably difficult to, to disarm someone and fight someone if they have a knife and you don't, uh, and, and you don't have a gun or any other kind of, uh, equalizer. Andrew Hondo says Apache use their Apache use their knife fight techniques for thousands of years against other tribes. They, they use stone war clubs, not much tomahawks, copper knives and stone knives. That's cool. That's cool. Those obsidian, Man, obsidian gets so sharp, and I love the stone, the stone war clubs. I have a wooden one. It's Zulu. It's not anything like the one you're talking about, but um, I remember my parents when I was very little. They went somewhere and brought back a war club. I thought it was a tomahawk at the time, but but in retrospect, yeah, it was a stone club. It had a a stone laced into a haft with leather and and you're just braining people with that you're not cutting anything pete davidson says cold steel 13 inch tanto beside my bed skull crusher doubles as a great back scratcher that's awesome i need a great back scratcher because i've i i've determined i can only ask my wife about once every three weeks to get like a really like a good back scratch that 
you know, and, and also you, you need to know this with back scratches or massages. If you don't know this, this is word to the wise. You don't say that it's good until you're ready for it to be done because then you get the, the triple tap. All right. So you don't, you, you can moan and groan and, you know, but never say this is such a good back scratch because then it's over. It will end within the minute. I guarantee it. The RMJ trench melee tool is a fantastic back scratcher. Yeah, no doubt. Or the um, the snuggles, the warhammer with all the uh, all the opposing teeth. <laughs> That'll do it. No doubt. Uh, uh, oh yeah, we're, you were all talking by the bed knives. I also keep by the bed uh, the like on so. In the drawer is the tanto, but on top, and then and then and then below is a, a little safe with some stuff in it. But then right on the surface is uh, the um, harbinger. No, what do they call it? The the new uh, Demco knives. I have the double edge with the serrations. What the hell were they calling it? Not the harbinger. Or the uh... so that's too late for me now. But I have that knife, and I have the Empress uh, tomahawk. The small uh, sp uh, spittoon hawk, spontoon hawk from um, Wingard. Greg Vincent says, last year I scored a very well-preserved USA-made vintage hunting knife at a pawn shop. It was an early Gil Hibben design for browning. How cool. Uh, they had no idea what they had there. I got it for five bucks. Beautiful. Beautiful, Craig. That's, that's what we all need to do. I need to, uh, I know, I know there's a pawn shop on my way to work, if I take my alternative route to work, and I went in there once years ago, hoping to find a knife, and they didn't have it. Is a like wrong part of town, I guess, for that. Um, so, uh, I every I had to check my phone because I heard you know the front door saw something, and uh, I always have to make sure of what it's seeing. Andrew Hondo says, and Apache used rabbit war throwing sticks. And a short Osage orange bow with iron and stone arrowheads. Then a mix of leave, uh, leave action. Oh, uh, lever action firearms later on. That's cool. Osage orange is an incredible wood. I had two pieces of Osage orange that a friend gave me from his tree in Ohio. One of them I still have. It's somewhere around here. I don't even. Uh, it might be in my closet, but it's a perfect war club with its uh, with its natural shape. And then the other one. I mounted uh, a pole axe and a hammer pole on and gave it to a friend. Hinderer Collector 41, good to have you here, man. It's been a while. Yo, yo, Bob and Jim. Well, it's good that you came here right as we're wrapping up, uh, but you got to remember to come back next week because uh, it's it's been too long, Brent. Supersonic Archery, good to, good to see you, man. Hands down, I keep my custom combat knife made by uh what is this legion 14 armorum uh this italian dude is just nuts in knife making and design by the way bob why don't you sew some of his knives in your show because i don't have any but i want to see i'm going to check this out i'm going to i'm going to write this down too before we wrap i i, I like the sound of this because uh also he's italian and we have to we have to uh support our italian brothers l e g I'm I'm guessing that's Legion 14 Armorum. Cool. Armorum. He's an eye tie and makes cool knives. All right, cool. I will definitely check him out. Thanks for the tip. Oh yeah. <laughs> Says Hinder a collector. Oh, by the way, I I'm, I'm I mean, I follow you on Instagram. I see I see what you got and you've got some you've always got the cool stuff. All right, speaking of the guy bringing the cool stuff, Jim has been working furiously behind the scenes, and I thank him for that. Uh, be sure to join us on Sunday for Denny Fury of Fury's Urban Combat Knives Unlimited. And if you look at the acronym from his knife company, uh, he doesn't mean it personally. Uh, very interesting guy. He's got a great background in martial arts, military and law enforcement. Uh, making custom knives and making knives that are being manufactured by um, Combative Edge. Uh, you know Combative Edge, and he's making them right here in the States. So uh, be sure to check that out on Sunday. And then check back in on Wednesday for the midweek supplemental. And then peppered throughout the week, peppered throughout, uh, you'll see shorts and videos. So uh, 
Thanks for joining us. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer.